Hi guys, this is Steve A, this is Tarantula Tassic Enclosures, and this is Collection Tour Part 2. Hi guys, a very, very warm welcome back. Right, today we are going to go through all of these. So we can call it a sort of enclosure, tarantula, tour... Yeah, that that would work. Um, if you did watch the collection tour before on a previous video, it was a bit lame. We had lots and lots of um, jars of dirt. So this one... Fingers crossed, we've got loads and loads of spiders for you to see. And if not, we've got all nice enclosures for you to have a look at and get a little bit of inspiration. Um, apart from that, guys, let's get straight down into it. We're, we're going to start with the top and work our way down. Thank you very much, guys. So first, we're going to start off with an adult female... Chromatopelma cyanupubescens, cyanub the green bottle blue tarantula. This is in uh, shallow grave enclosure. You can see how she's webbed it up, awesome. Done exactly what I wanted her to do, built her. Hide in the rib cage. It's not often spiders do what you want, but this time she did. Next, another one of these beauties. It's a better picture this time. Another green bottle blue in the Terminator enclosure. You can see how she's the webbing sort of making it. A little bit more creepy. Next one, I don't think we're going to see a spider on this one, but this is the predator enclosure. This is the only one I've replicated for a commission build. It does have lights in the eyes, but there's a poker theater. Striata down there because I built in built in hide. It's all live moss, real plants. This is the first of the Avix. And Vicuaria cuata or cuata or whatever you call it. But you can see how she sort of made it more epic with all the webbing. Real plants full of bioactive. She certainly made it her own home. She's got a hide down there, but she doesn't use it. She prefers to hang out. All around everywhere, mostly on the front glass at the minute. She tried to build a web tunnel on the front glass and um, I had to sort of destroy that. It would have just been too much of a pain feeding. And now she's just gone back to the back. Yeah. One of my favourites. Right, this is the Goonies enclosure. We've got to be really sort of quiet around here. There's a Pocatheria ornata. Sitting down there, I built two hides either side of the skull. Full rock effect background. One eyed willy. A little bit of webbing she started from the skull. Hopefully, she'll do a little bit more. That would be epic. And we'll go to the Star Wars enclosure. This is yet to have an occupant, so, but we're just doing it. If you didn't see the video, we've got hide down the back. 
I wanted the plants to really sort of bed in before we added anything in there. They seem to be doing all right. That Spanish moss at the back there, full bioactive, custom paint job and a retro ATST walker. Next is the Groom Creeper enclosure. Really, really like the way this turned out. And there is uh, Anopelma Simani. I might have actually got that pronunciation right. But I love the old overall effect. Awesome little spider as well. So here we come to that another green bottle blue. This is another female. Reach over and give it a look. Alien enclosure, full alien hide background. You can see the xenomorph in the background there. 3D printed egg, all hand painted. Bishop there. Looking a bit sorry for himself, all webbed up. But I love the way this is sort of added to the the effect of the enclosure. Here we come to the big girl. A giant white knee. Necronomicon buck style background, all handmade. It's one of my first ever, well, it is my first ever horror enclosure. I had a little bit of a different setup, but I changed it and added the cork bark background, um, hide even. She is a big girl. I'm trying not to feed her at the minute because she's getting a bit big. And we come to a second evil deck enclosure with the fruit cellar hide. That's all, goes all the way down the back there. She does use it. She's just, literally, just only a couple of days molted. Absolutely stunning. Panther Beaters, SP Costa. Right, this one, we're not gonna see nothing. Apart from the enclosure. This is the zombie enclosure. Built-in hide, and in there is a naughty ABT. Orange baboon tarantula, highly aggressive, but she's in there somewhere. I'm not going to actually stick me hand in there to poke her out. Hopefully she'll bring the webbing out a bit and make this enclosure a bit more epic. It's still one of my favourites. Right, in here we have the Gramastola Polkrapes, Chacogogni. This is in the uh, catacombs enclosure. So all those skulls and bones and everything were all handmade. Took me absolutely months. And I'm thinking about redoing it actually. Um, I'm not liking the brown. I'm not really liking this Komodo tank either. I hate these um, sliding doors. Doesn't give you much access into the enclosure to feed and whatever. They're hard to clean. I think I might just redo it all in, a, in an extra terror, but with a more gray sort of um, stone. One of the old builds. Another one, we're not gonna see the spider, but this is the Hellraiser enclosure. So in now we have a Pocotheria Lowland. Sabusa Lowland. Stunning, absolutely stunning spider. But you don't see her much, maybe in the evenings.
And here we go for another avicularia avicularia pinko. This one's a little docile little girl. Friday the 13th enclosure. She's been in there for about two years now. So she built that web hammock across the top, which I knew she would do. Just chills out there most of the time. It has a bark background with the cust uh, um, Camp Crystal Lake sign in the background. She's quite happy in there. You don't see that much one um, that one much. So nice picture of that. Let you know what she looks like. In here we have an avic. Vicularia and Vicularia, you can just see the feet. Two little small ones, one with ash. Then we've got the tombstone enclosure, which we have got a Pocotheria Rufiata. You can see they started webbing all around the top, making it look a bit cool. This is the first of the sort of natural, natural style enclosures. That's just live moss. Nandu chromesis or whatever it's called. But nice stunning little spider. Now we come to the Michael Myers Halloween enclosure. So I built all the front of the Myers house. You can see closely, she's webbed up pretty much all of it, but there's the front door, windows with blood, all backlit. And there she is up there. Green bottle blue number th four. She's made it look pretty effective. Now we come to the big boy. This is a mature male, Lassiodora Parabella. Salmon pink bird eater, mature male. This is in the uh, Skull Island enclosure. It's a cheap skull and I built a rock background and blended all the skull in by adding sand and glue and then painting it all and sealing it all. So we head on to the few of the smaller ones. This is another green bottle blue. So she's in there. Can we see her on the side? No, she's pretty much webbed all in there. This was a bit of an experiment because we actually got a live plant in there, which is a succulent. So they don't need a lot of water. And because the green bottle blue is like really, really arid, which is good, always good for my builds. Lack of humidity, so you can add a lot more different things. But she's webbed it up quite nice. Right, here we have a horn baboon. Can you see her bum? This is not one of my enclosures, it's just the enclosure that I got, got it with. She's in there. Another heavy webber, so got a little plan for this one. Definitely needs an upgrade. That's way too boring. But you can see how much web they lay. Right, so now we come, this is the Evil Dead cabin enclosure. Bolt background, Brachypelma bohemi. It's not eaten in absolutely an age, so I think it's due to molt very shortly. We had a bit of a nightmare with this one. Tate hit it with a football and it cracked. The cork bark was, if you see that sort of line going there, 
it was just gonna come down. So what we did, we put vinyl on one side and then just carried the cork bark all the way along to the front of the glass there. Sort of fix it. I was gonna auction this one off for charity, but as soon as it broke, um, we gave up on it and just kept it for myself. I can um, knowingly auction off a broken tank, but it's uh, held up quite well. I think the sealant on this side, because it's got aquarium sealant, plus the vinyl, the other side, let's give it a nice seal. She's not gonna get out of there. But still, stunning spider. Definitely gonna be molting soon, nice bald patch. But these are notorious hair flickers. Good start of spiders though. You don't see many big ones though, you usually just find them in slings. There's another little one. Pariposa at Plosis. This is a humid tank with all the live moss. Believed to be male, so I'm a bit disappointed, but I've got two smaller ones that have grown a lot slower, so fingers crossed they will be females, so I'll probably grow this one on a little bit more and as it's a male, I'll send it off to be have some fun time with the ladies I think he's due to molt as well because he's not eaten in a while and these are ferocious eaters do quite require a lot of humidity that's why the live moss keeps it uh, humid in there and we come to another naturally sort of build this is a Pariposa Sturmy in there I'll add a picture now don't see her uh, that much but as you can see from that picture it's stunning stunning spider same with the, the last fur replacer, I keep it nice and humid in there because that's what they like. This one is a female, so that will require a nice big enclosure. Humid, full bioactive, once a bit bigger. It's probably about, uh, about three and a half inches maybe at the minute. But still, there's uh, another little variation on what you can do with your enclosures, all the moss is found outside, give it a rinse off, keep it nice and humid, gives it uh, a nice sort of effect as well. So this is one of my own tanks, and here we go, a little Eclaria metallica, female. Just a plain, simple setup. Created the lid. It's quite a neat little design. It's one of my prototypes, really. Elm Street dual enclosures. One design, two enclosures with a uh, big area uranuses and. Uh, Metallica. There's another little one in there. If you can see it on the side. Avicularia. Avicularia. Slightly bigger one. A little Freddy set up. It's just made a web tunnel all the way up. Ventilation in the top. Nice little lank, lantern conversion. Added this bit of um, acrylic at the front. But the way the door's shut and it's, you've got ventilation everywhere really. The spider can't get out, but ben, plenty of air can get in. A little experiment I've done, but it's been in there ages. I think it looks quite cool. Little tiny Star Wars themed enclosure. There's another avicularia, avicularia in here, so 
Let's try and pop her out so we can have a look. Let's see how docile they are. There you go. See this video is loads better, you see loads of spiders. Simple little setup. It's another female. So now we come to the one that started off all this madness. This was my very first enclosure. Down in there, all the way down there, we have a Carabina Versicolor adult female. And we built the hide, background, and a little water dish holder all at the front. This was my first build, so I've sort of kept it sort of a prosperity and see how far I've moved on. Uh, I'm thinking she may need an upgrade because she is an absolutely gorgeous spider. She's just been paired as well a while ago, so hopefully she may produce an egg sac. Oh guys, thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one and you saw a lot more spiders than you did in the last collection tour, which is always a bonus. Um, that's the trouble with keeping tarantulas. Um, a lot actually just hide away and you never, ever see. I did have a break from the hobby a little while ago, well, a few years ago. And when I came back in, I was, it was the number one thing I was going to do is not keep any more pet holes. Um, I just think they're just pointless. Don't get me wrong, there are some absolutely stunning, stunning tarantulas out there which just live in a hole. Um, to be perfectly honest, I, I'm past all that. Yeah, I want to see my spider every six to 12 months or maybe a leg when you feed it. Um, I want nice enclosures, spiders you can see. So I'm picking sort of the, the display spiders, the green bottle blues, the salmon pink bird eaters, the aging giant white knees, brachypelmas. You see these spiders all the time, and so they work really well with my builds. Um, I'm not really going to dive out of that. The burrowing spiders and stuff, I really couldn't think of any anything worse to try and build an enclosure for. It'd be a nice sort of surround with a hole um, and a spider you're never, ever, ever going to see. But... This is uh, how we're going. Obviously, when I started um, building all these enclosures, you saw the Carabina Versicolor enclosure in, in the video. Um, a lot have changed. I've sort of moved on, and um, as my skills have sort of de developed, I've changed stuff. So a lot of the enclosures that we did actually start out with have been removed, replaced, but now I'm getting sort of this is the custom wall. So obviously all the top shelf will stay. This next shelf down will stay. The next shelf down, a few of those are gonna be redone. Um, and obviously we've got the bottom sort of shelves that are gonna be completely custom built. So all next year, um, it's gonna be full on building. I think we was at a record this year. Um, we done 10, 10 builds on the channel. So that's pretty good for a year, really. Ten builds, which meant you was, if you're a regular watching, you're getting about a build a month sort of thing, which was good. Plus all the other tarantula unboxing and rehousing into other tubs and all the other malarkey I try and fill throughout the year. So um, I'll try and do that weekly, weekly vid. As we was going down to the end of the year now, and I wasn't going to start building until the new year, I thought a couple of collection tours would be just in order just to sort of tie up the two years of youtubing that i've done a big massive thank you to all you guys that have supported me over the two years and all you new subscribers it does actually mean the world to me um it's actually pushing me on um further we've hit four thousand subscribers um instagram's gone mental hopefully we're going to reach ten thousand followers on instagram by christmas don't follow Instagram, um, apart from that, awesome guys. I really, 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 really appreciate everything that you say, all the likes on Facebook, all the likes on Instagram, all the likes and comments on the videos. It really does spur me on to try and sort of better myself. Plus, 
give you tutorials of how to do everything in one video which i mean this some of these videos is it, it can take like two three four weeks to film one because i do a little bit and because of fa family and work commitments and everything i just you, you do a little bit on an enclosure as you go along so one 10 minute video probably can take up to a month to film it's uh so i really hope you appreciate that the work that i'd actually try and do to put into these videos to make them easy for you to follow or give you a little bit of inspiration maybe follow that idea and twist it and turn it and thingy and i've seen loads and loads of people who have done that and it is absolutely awesome right i'm gonna stop gabbling on i'm gonna do a last um end of the year video which will be the next one just to say Merry Christmas and everything to you all guys. Apart from that, please, please comment down below. Maybe pick your favourite enclosure. Yeah, and then uh, we'll do uh, people's favourite enclosure at the end of the uh, at the end of the year. We'll do something like that. So please comment down below. Pick which one was your favourite enclosure. Apart from that, guys, please comment down below. Hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. It doesn't cost you a penny. But it does notify you of upcoming videos. Apart from that, guys, I shall see you later.